when you get what you want and struggle for self and the will makes you king for a day just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what the master say raising your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass the fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staying back from the glass he's the fellow to please never mind all the rest for he's with you clear to the end and you passed your most difficult dangerous test if the man in the class is your friend you may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get the pats on your back as you pass but your final reward will be heartache and tears as you've cheated the man in the glass words of dale wimbrough but we all know it from words of nigel adkins the man in the dugout for saturday friday's game i don't know what day it is it's friday we play to i'm here on good friday easter friday whatever you want to call it but it's protest Friday if you're out of a clout and number persuasion. We've obviously got the problems going on in the football club. Tramia so I mean, have their own with a Palios ownership as well. But we obviously have the whoop out and the swine sparks out protest going on. And uh, I'll just read you a bit about what the Independent have said. So four days ago, they treated. We are happy to forward the details of the protest. Date and time, Good Friday. It was Good Friday, the 29th of the 3rd of the 24th year of the millennium year. Uh, meeting at half past one Friday afternoon and the protest will start at two o'clock. The location's at the corporate suite entrance at the Morrison stand, so the main stand if you, if you like. Let's get change done. They said we ask supporters to come with banners or flyers printed out to use during the protest. This will be a peaceful protest. Please allow room for fans to enter the stadium. Do not attend with pyrotechnics. Let's get change done. Peaceful is the key word. Honestly, don't go and ruin it for the rest of the fans. If you go there, please, please go. And we need as many as we can get there. Uh, I'm going to try and get there as well because uh, obviously I shan't shout and rant about it as, as much as I do after the matches. So I'd be a bit of a coward if I don't get there. But I'm going to try and get there. I can't promise out. Um, and uh, I'll wear my Whoop and Sparks out shirt. But yeah, if, if you go there, be respectful, be peaceful, get what needs to be done, get the message out there, get the chance going and let's let's get behind this now because we, we want someone who we can follow we want someone that we can believe in in terms of get, getting a movement going and we want someone to believe in on the pitch and we don't have anything to believe in on the pitch and that comes from off the pitch because it's it's uh it's too much of a reoccurrence to keep blaming the managers keep blaming the players you know we must have had of well over 100 players in the last few seasons i mean we, i think we had na over 90 players in the, since we've been in league two Never mind since Rupp's come into the football club and the ones Ryan Sparks has recruited, the three different Edu recruitments as well, the ten different managers under Rupp's reign, you know, not all those can be bad. They've all had hands tied behind the, behind their backs. And obviously, you look at the pitch at the minute, the state that's in, I don't think it's mainly to do with the club, but it's another issue, the training, you know, getting kicked off by the t teachers and you know there's, there's loads of problems going in in the football club and managers have always called them out and been blindsided by them because we we are club first we are football club first we are results first we are Bradford City first we all bleed Claret number we all want the best for Bradford City and we, we aren't seeing the best of Bradford City at the minute and that's what we all strive for no matter what persuasion you're sitting even if you don't believe all the whoop out and sparks out stuff and you think it's just petty people wanting to create change for no reason and you, you sort of sit on the fence where you think that you know we are we do deserve to be where we, we you can't be happy with that and we all want the best for Bradford City and I think we all know what the best for Bradford City is and there's change there so get down there if you can I appreciate a lot of people can't and a lot of the attendance is down anyway um, in terms of the game and I think City event have said that you know we're not going to the game we're going to go to North Parade let's try and get as many fans there I, I will be watching the game I will be going to watch the, the football match because uh, that's what I paid a season ticket for um, well my nan did but um, yeah, that, that's that's what that's what needs to get done, and I'm glad that, that we've got someone who we can. We've got a leader, and you know, let's follow the leader. So a long a long wait to get to the key players of Tramia. You know, normally it's the first 20 seconds, but do like the video if you did. Uh, subscribe if you're new. The support we've got is unbelievable recently. I can't believe that we are now seven subscribers away from 350. I only hit two, 250 about a month ago, so that that's fantastic. And obviously the aim is to get to 400 subscribers before the end of the season. That'll be quite a push. Let me know if it's called ditching and thoughts going into a game as ever. Uh, Apta for me is their key player. He's an unbelievable player. Uh, you know, when I watch the highlights, when I see the, the goals and watching a bit of Tramia, he always stands out because it is just 
he's fearless. You know, he takes players on. He's he can go on his right. He can go on his left. He always looks to get a shot off in and around the penalty area. He's a player I'd, I we love. We would love to have at Bradford here because we, we don't really have any players like that who takes players on and and he's relentless in doing so. Um, he loves the shot. Good flair player. Uh, and like I say, he's two footed as well. Uh, can go on either side of his foot. Next season, we'll be interested to see how he, how he goes. Yeah. Connor Jennings, we know a lot about him. Obviously, 11 goals this season. He's a bit of a selfless player, really good in the air, brings other players into the into the game, and that's what you need in, in the Tramia system. And Hendry, the midfielder, a bit of a box-to-box -box midfielder, uh, got a good shot on him in and around the box, picks up a lot of space, so a lot of teams haven't really tracked him. Uh, he's, I think he's got six goals as well. But, um, yeah, he's uh, defensively quite strong on the ball. Um, quite strong defensively, not on the ball, but tidy on the ball as well. So another decent player there for Tramia Rovers. The last five results, they've just come off the back of a 3-1 defeat to Crawley, a 1-0 win against Wrexham, a 2-1 win against Mansfield Town, a 1-1 draw against Gillingham and a 1-0 win against Sutton United, which they should have had a penalty in, in that game as well. The Crawley game, they're all open, all at sea and hopefully that's uh, a, a replica we will expect to see on Friday. I doubt it because we've been all at sea for the last four games, conceded in, what is it now 13 goals is it in the last four uh seven seven ten thirteen yes 13 goals we've conceded in the last four this will be exciting uh three nil defeat to Arrogate, three nil defeat to Notts County five one defeat to Mansfield Town and a two nil defeat to Forest Green Rovers and a three nil win against Accrington Stanley I honestly think that game happened two years ago I, I can't believe it was um it was only the, the the fifth match we've had. I can't believe that. It's, it feels like an eternity. We're 18th in the home form table with 26 points from 20 home games. Mark Hughes, I was looking earlier, was obviously sacked against Trammy in the reverse fixture after a 2-1 defeat. He got hounded out by the away supporters. But he was sacked after his first home defeat, that Walsall game, the 3-1. That was his first home defeat in 11 games in the league, which is astonishing, really, to say how we've been at home this season. Only six home wins, and I think Graham Alexander's only won two or three home games as well. So that's really concerning, and it goes to show again another thing of what Mark Hughes did. His home form also here was was improved. I mean, last season we were pretty decent at home, especially towards the back end of the season as well. We made it somewhat of a of a not a fortress, but we made it a good place to go. Uh, for us, uh, not not the away team. The away team in Tramia, though, they're 21st in the away form. We've only 15 points from 20 away games. So hopefully that's something to, to look forward to for, for us. And But we know we love giving teams a, a, a win, don't we, when they're struggling in, in some form of a, of a stat. And Andy Cook has got five goals in nine against Tramia, and they obviously had a fruitful spell there with 51 goals in 94 games. Tramia fans, what do you think of Andy Cook? Because we all know a lot of... His former clubs hate him and I don't really know why um, for a lot of them. So I've already quoted him at the intro. Nigel Adkins is an excellent AFL manager for me. Uh, get, gets what it takes to be at a football club, builds a community and obviously what he did at Scunthorpe and Southampton is always going to be remembered. Since then he's had a uh, number of clubs that have failed. I think Charlton, when he was sat there, they were 23rd. I think they were in League One, their worst ever finish, their worst ever placing, sorry, in the AFL. And obviously they haven't been doing too great this season either. They've always been a pretty poor one club for the last um, large number of years now under different ownerships. They've not really got it going. Um, but worked wonders at Scunthorpe, got them up to the championship. Uh, I think he had a physio there before he got them to the into the managerial role. Southampton, I think he took over and they were in the relegation zone of League One, got them up to the Premier League and sort of built the foundations for what they went on to be because, you know, 10 years ago, Southampton were basically the Brighton that are now and obviously then Leicester became what the Southampton were as well. They sort of made that blueprint of signing young players, developing them and selling them on. And that's a blueprint. Again, I'd love to see it sit in some form of a structure. Uh, like I say, he did okay at Hull. I feel like that was the last okay job he's done. But Tramia so far came in as a... Was he a technical advisor or a director or something like that? Basically, supporting uh, Dolls, the, the the manager over there before. Ian Dolls was it, um, who was a terrible appointment. Didn't get it right and uh, they got rid of him quite quickly. But to be fair, they could have got rid of him much sooner as well. And I thought that when I knew Nigel Wilkins were working alongside him as a higher-up, 
I thought that didn't really make sense. I thought, you've got a manager there that's proven, why not just give him the role instead of this inexperienced one who's done nothing apart from manage Bognor Regis, I think it was, someone like that. Um, or, no, Bagner won it in, in Wales. So, yeah, it, it, it was an odd appointment and they got it wrong. Is he the best guy in football? I, I listened to so many interviews and, like I say, I quoted him and he just seems like a lovely man, um, does Nigel Adkins. Probably up there with your Stuart McCall's of the role. So, yeah, like I say, builds a community and gets everyone on, cro on, on side. Great man manager, great man person um, and loves a quote. So what can we expect? They, they do... Uh, open the midfield in transition, they do commit to attacks and they play a 4-4-2 so you do know that if you commit to attack, uh, attacking in a 4-4-2 you know that your midfield's going to be quite open in, in the transition and you're going to leave your back line a bit exposed. Uh, we, we saw, we've seen good and bad with a 4-4-2 at our time following Braft City, obviously Notts County more recently under Alexander, we saw that uh, implosion of it and we haven't returned to it but we've also seen it with McCall and Parkinson playing that way and it's been entertaining and it's got the results and Nigel Adkins uh, certainly has done that so far. Um, they're comfortable at conceding shots, they allow shots to be took around the penalty box and I think they'll be more than happy to do that with us because I, I can't remember the last time we scored from outside the box. The quick in transitions, they're quite a direct team, you know, that they'll play with both up to the two strikers and play quick from there and sitting deep and will frustrate us. Um, so it's going to be a tough game, probably a tough watch, but we'll see how it goes. Sam Walker in goal, John Tomkinson with, in the back three. He should be back from international duty now, massively missed him. Matty Platt as well guaranteed a place for me if he's not injured I'd just hope for bringing him off after 60 minutes with precautionary and pre-planned and obviously Kieran Kelly has to be back in that back three what's the point in playing full backs there when you've got three three centre backs hopefully Halliday and Richards as the wing backs I uh, don't think there's all controversial about that especially when I've got Rodsworth in the midfield I think he has to start young player coming through need to create a path for Real. Alexander said his best position it's easy more as a, as a midfielder and that's why I'd probably keep Richards in if not you go Smallwood and McDonald and play Rods with a thin left wing back we need to see these young players find a way into a team but Donald keeps his place because I think his patience on the ball his command for the ball and his his qualities uh, outshine anything else we've, we've got in that midfield with what the Smallwood would bring and obviously we're at home and then the two wingers sort of in the number 10 positions Bobby Poynton again I'll keep saying it he has to start I actually remember saying back in September that he'll play for England and since I've been uh, very sort of uh, what's the word I've been calm talking about him that's not the word I'm looking for but I've been quite composed in my thinking when talking about Poynton why he might not should be playing why you know it, there's weaknesses but there's nothing left of the season we need to see these players play and he's definitely got the quality to go at a higher level physicality maybe not but you only get that by match experience we need to see him and I did consider playing him as a 10 and having Nibbetson and Cook up top but when he aren't even featured on the bench Nibbetson that would be quite quite a step up but I think he's got an attrick recently as well Adam Wilson like I say Jamie Walker t it's tough on him not to make my squad to be fair but um, like I say I want to see I don't want to see you know so someone with not a lot of pace or uh, you know playing as a winger position I don't think it really suits him and I want to see more of Adam Wilson and then Andy Cook up top we've already talked about him hopefully he can get uh, his shooting boots on and get us over the line for a win but like I say I couldn't care less about everything I've talked about apart from at the beginning with the protest and I think that's the, the main thing uh, let me know if you're going uh, down to the game to watch the football or whether you're going to protest then going after let me know your routine for the game even if you're not going to a game let me know uh, if you're not and why let me know your thoughts going into a game in the comments down below score predictions team selections anything protests uh, any Tramia fans as well who've uh, watched the video let me know your thoughts on your situation as well because I know your ownership Palios ownership uh, you're not great fans of them um, so let me know you like in the comments down below, like the video if you did and subscribe if you're new, like I said, support recently has been unbelievable. So thank you very much for watching, have a good one.